In this video, I want to talk about working with CSV files. CSV files are text files that you can also view in spreadsheet software, like for example, Excel or Calc. So to begin with, let me get an example of a CSV file. So here I Googled for Nobel Prize in Medicine Excel, and that'll probably get me a CSV file. So here I can click and there you are, there is a CSV file. Let me download it. So by default, mostly things download to the downloads folder. Let me open up this file. Usually you'll get a dialogue that's kind of like that. I'll say OK. And here we are. I have opened it up in Excel or rather Calc in my case. I'll usually just say Excel because that is probably what most people are using. Now, sometimes you can't find a CSV file and you can use Excel in order to convert any kind of spreadsheet file into a CSV file. In this case, this is already a CSV file. Let me save it to a folder that I can later find. So right now it's in downloads, which you arguably could find as well, but I actually wanna save it to my C4M folder to this file. So I already have one, I'll just overwrite it. So it's gonna be madnobel.cs. Okay, uh, so I want to replace it. A lot of the time you'll get a dialog box like that. So what it says is that you might not necessarily always want to save things in CSV format, except when you want to process the files using Python, in which case you do. So you should say use text CSV format. Okay, so now that it's saved, I can look at what it looks like. Well, of course, this is what it looks like in Excel but you can also look at what it looks like if you open it with something like Notepad in Windows or Edit on a Mac as text. And this is the same thing that you'd see when you open the file using Python later on. So here I'll open it with gedit. You, on the Mac, you'd open it with Edit. On, uh, when, on Windows, you'd open it with Notepad. So this is what the file actually looks like. It's just that Excel displays it differently. So every row in Excel corresponds to a line in the text file. So for example, if you look at this line, so let me move it over here, like so. So this line corresponds to this row in Excel. It's the same thing. So what you see here is that the information in different cells in the text file, it's actually separated by commas. So this is what cell number one or column A, this is column B, column C in this case is empty. We can verify that it is in fact empty, it is. And then this is column D and so on. So you see there is a correspondence here. Now let's open this file, the CSV file, this is of course the same file, it's just displayed with Excel using Python. So if you remember, I saved the file to this folder. So the first thing I'll do is I'll change to this folder. Now I should be able to actually open it. So I'll say F equals open. And here I'll get the name of the file. I believe it was uh, Mad Nobel. If I got it Nobel, if I got it wrong, then I'll just get an error, but I got it right. So now I can read from the file. So if you remember, you can use f.read line if you assigned open the file name to f before, of course. You can use f.read line to keep getting lines from the file. So here is the first line, and you can verify that this is indeed the first line. Here's the second line, here's the third line, here's the fourth line. Let's actually say line equals f.read line, and now we'll get the fourth line, so the next one after this guy. Let's look at it. This is what it looks like. We can look at it in Excel, 1902. Here it is. That's the line. Now, this is just a single string but we can convert it to a list. If we say line.split 
and we give the comma in quotes as an argument. So this is the separator. This is what we split on. So we'll get all the different items in this string that are separated by commas in the list. Here we are. I can get the first line, uh, the first thing there, 1902, like so, and I can get the second thing, like so, and so on. So at this point, we can actually look up, for example, the winner in physiology or medicine for 1903. Okay, that's this guy. Yeah. So now this is ze the zeroth element, this is the first element, second element, third element. So if I say line dot split on the comma, the third element of that, element number three counting from zero, this is what we get. Did we get it right? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, it's just that we got this person because we were actually looking at this line. So in the simplest case, this is how you would get the win the Nobel winner in physiology or medicine. Uh, you would just split in the comma and this is what you would get. So now let's talk about the task that I want to try to accomplish. Here's the function that I want to write. I want to write the function get mad winners, which would take the file name that contains all the information about all the winners and the year. And I want to say that this is a string, obviously, and I want to say that the year is an integer. Arguably, it could be thought of as a string as well. A string like, for example, you know, 1903. That's reasonable as well, but I want to make it an integer. And I want to return a list of all the winners for a particular year in physiology or medicine. But there are, if you download the file and look, there are some complications there. So sometimes it's just a matter of finding the line where the first item is, for example, 1903 and looking up the corresponding value. But sometimes, for example, in 1917, the answer is none. So in this case, what you'd want to do is return the empty list because there were no winners in physiology or medicine. Another complication is when you have multiple winners. Uh, as is the case, for example, in 1932, where there were two winners in physiology or medicine. So in this case, you want to return a list with two elements, first element and second element. So, okay. The first thing that we want to do is we want to keep reading lines from the file until the point where we find this year that we're looking for. How to do that? Well, we got to say, okay, let's first read the header. That's the thing that we want to skip. It always makes sense to look at the file in Excel. So the header consists of the first two lines. After that point, we start getting the actual information. So let's do that. So I'll say F is open file name, so I'm reading the file, and at this point I'm in the very beginning of the file. I want to just skip the header, so what I'll do is I'll say f.readLine once, and f.readLine again. Done. At this point I want to know where I am, so I got to read one line, but here I just discarded the information from the first line and the second line. The information from the third line I actually want to save. So what I'll say is line equals f dot read line. Now let me, I can of course look up what the year is on the third line, but let me do it automatically. So how would they do it? Well, I would say year equals line dot split on a comma at zero, and this whole thing ought to be converted to an integer. So that's the year. Now we are ready to do a loop. So what should the loop do? So here's my plan. My plan is first, keep, keep reading line, the file line by, sorry, file. <laughs> 
uh, line by line until we get to the year that we're looking for. Uh, note, by the way, that this year is called, uh, this year that we're looking for is actually called year, so I shouldn't call this guy year. Let's say that this is current year. So after we've read line by line and got to the year that we're looking for, we want to do something new. We want to say, keep reading until we encounter information from the next year. And then we get and storing the winners in the list. So let me show you what it means on the spreadsheet. So let's say that we're looking for the year 1908. So we ought to keep reading the lines until we encounter 1908. So we ought to keep reading. So here we just keep going until we encounter 1908, at which point we change what we do. So at this point, we ought to save this information and then keep reading. So now read this line and get the information from here. And now read this line and see, oh, well, now it's 1909, so we ought to return. So that's the general plan. So let's execute the first part of the plan. So what I'm saying here is I need to keep reading while I still not at this year. So I want to say while the current year is not equal to year, what do I want to do? I want to just keep reading. So how do I keep reading? Well, the way I keep reading is I call f.read line. Now I still want to say line equals f.read line because I want to actually know what the new year now is, right? So I actually need to reset current year using the thing that I just read. So line will keep updating to the new line, to the next line that you read from the file, and current year is going to keep updating as well. Can I do that quite? Well, not quite, because sometimes what I'm doing is I'm reading a line that kind of looks like this, and the information about the year is just going to be the empty string. Now, as it happens, if you try to convert the empty string to an integer, you won't get, well, like maybe you'd hope for a zero, you won't get a zero, what you'll get is just an error. So you can't quite do that. What can you do instead? Well, what you can do is you can say, if line that split zero is not the empty string, then you update the current year. If it is the empty string, you don't actually need to update the current year because the information here is actually still, if there were any information here, it would still be about 1901. So things work out. So that's the plan. We always keep reading the next line and if the line actually contains a year then the first element will not be the empty string so we get to update the year so okay let's say that we're done with the while loop what does it mean it means that we kept reading let's say to be concrete that the year that we were looking for was let's say 1908. So it me means that we kept saying after treat line, after treat line, after treat line, and so on, until at some point we said line equals after treat line. So we said line equals after dot treat line over here. And then we said if line dot split is not equal to the empty string, and in this case it wasn't equal to the empty string because it was equal to 1908 then current year is equal to this. So we converted this guy to, to an integer. So current year will have become 1908. And now the next time that we evaluate this expression and we decide whether we want to go in the while loop, this is actually going to be false. Current year is going to be 
not dot equal to here because current year is going to be equal to here. So we'll get to this point. So at this point, what we're going to say is, okay, so now current year is equal to year. So what does it mean? It means that we should actually, so how did we get current year? Well, we split the line and we converted the thing to, the, to an integer. And it turned out that the current year is actually the year that we are looking for. So when we are over here, we need to get the information from lines. So if you think about it, we are on something like this line. So we need to get this guy and get it to the list that we're, we're eventually going to be returning. So here, let's actually create the list that we're going to be returning like so. And at this point, current year is equal to year. So it's a good time to actually append line.split on a comma at three. If you remember, back here, we figured out that the person who won the prize in medicine is over here. So we'll just append this person to the line. Okay, great. Are we done? Well, not quite. And in fact, if you remember, one of the things that we needed to take care of was this kind of case where this is none. So let's do that. Let's actually say name is equal to this guy, even though we don't quite know that it's name. And now we can say, if name is not equal to none, like this. So this is not the Python none, this is just the English none, right? So this looks, as far as Python concerned, just like a name, it's just that the name happens to be none, and we happen to know that none is not actually a name. So this is why this none is in quotes. So if name is not equal to none, we'll say result append name. Great. But we're not quite done yet because now it might be that we're in a situation that's kind of like that where we would be done, but it might be, like we said, that we're in a situation like that where we need to keep reading. So let's do that. So we'll say, while current year, in this case, we can say while current year is actually equal to year. So what should we do while current year is equal to year? Well, we should do the same kind of thing. Let me copy this. So if I highlight the thing and now press tab, everything will become indented. And at this point, we need to keep reading. So here I said that I want to read the name and I want to append the name if it doesn't happen to be none. And now I want to get the next line and possibly update current year. So here I will keep going and I will keep updating current year. If current year gets updated, so if, if current year here is not the empty string and if current year gets updated, then this condition becomes false, so I'll exit the while loop. So what I'm doing is exactly this. You'll notice that because I'm doing the while loop, I don't actually need to do this anymore. Why don't I need to do this? Because at first, current year is definitely going to be equal to year. So I'll definitely do this the once, at which point I'll read line. And if it so happens that I got to the point where I update the current year, I won't do this again. Because once current year becomes different from year, I'm done. Once I've both read all the lines up until the point where I reached the year that I was looking for, 
and then read in all the information that I could possibly have, I'm basically done. I can return result, which I've built up using this loop. At this point, it's a good idea to see if we haven't missed anything because the data here can be kind of messy. Now, one thing we kind of arguably missed is that sometimes it might be the case that the entry is just empty. I'm not sure if we have such a case. Yeah, here we have such a case. So that's another possibility that we need to account for. So here we just accounted for name being equal to none, in which case we didn't append the name. Uh, another thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that name is not equal to the empty string. Let's now try and test the function. So here's a typical case. Uh, let's try to run the function for 1947. There you are. This is the result that we got. Let's make sure that this is the right result. Indeed it is. We had three winners. In 1946, we didn't have any. So let's say, let's see if it works for 1947. Uh, good practice here is to actually try to record this. So here I'm being a little bit, a little bit unprincipled and I'm just copying the output from what I got. So I manually checked that this output is actually correct. Of course, in general, this kind of thing might lead to trouble where you're running the function and you're getting whatever the output the function is saying. And here you're kind of confirming that, oh yeah, that's, that's what I wanted. If you're not careful, you might try to now evaluate this. This of course should be true. And you'd be kind of lulled into a false sense of security that everything is fine because of course you just like copied this. So ideally you just type it in by hand. So now let me type in the next thing by hand so that I know that things work correctly. So I'll try to get the winners for 46. And here I happen to know that the correct answer is the empty list for whatever reason, at least in this spreadsheet, you don't see any winners in 1946. So let me try and see if that's gonna work out for me. And then it does work out for me. I can of course just check for the value, for the return value here manually. It is indeed the empty string. What's another thing that we might like to check? Well, for example, we might like to check 1940 where the answer was none and see that that works out as well. So for 1940, the answer should indeed be none. No, it should be the empty list as well. So is that true? Yes, it's true. I can, of course, like since that's true, obviously what I'm getting here is the empty list. Let's see if there are any other interesting cases that we have. Uh, I don't believe we have any cases that are that interesting. So one possibility is this guy runs and up until 2013. We don't know what happens in 2014. So let me try and run it for 2014. At this point, you might like to pause and try to predict yourself what's gonna happen. So let me try that say 2014. Well, that's a shame the thing actually crashed. So ideally in this kind of case, what you would do is just say, okay, I need to be able to know that this file doesn't go beyond 2013. So what I'll do is I'll just say, okay, here, I'll just say in the doc string that the year must be between 1900 and 2013. And if I say it in the doc string, well, if the user tries to look up what happened in 2014 and it doesn't work out for them, well, kind of not my fault. That's an allowable kind of thing to do. So let's have another test case just to be sure. And let's randomly pick, pick a year, let's say 1918. So let's see what happened in 1918. 
1918, the answer is none. That's kind of boring. Let's go with 19, 1919. And let me copy this name and say that in 1919, that's the correct answer. And let me now check that this matches. It indeed does match. I can check here whether it's works working out. Yes, it is working out. We're done. One more thing that I want to show you is how to deal with actual Excel files rather than CSV files. So here, let me, instead of downloading the CSV, let me download the Excel file, like so. Apparently, I need to wait for a bit because it's just starting. Okay, it's now done. Let me open the Excel file. Looks kind of like this. Uh, so generally, you'd see that the Excel files will be kind of like a little bit fancier than the CSV files. So if I try to save this file, so let me say I'll save, save it as, so let me go to my C4M folder again. So let me just call it something like a.xlxx, which is the format in which it's in. So again, uh, usually the software will try to get it to use its own format. In this case, I want to use the Excel format, which is implied by the XL, XLXX uh, file extension here. So if I try to open it, first of all, let me open it with my text editor. So here, uh, my operating system doesn't really want me to, uh, doesn't want to allow me to do it, but I can override it and say that I still want to open it with edit. So it's not going to make sense. And if you're going to try to open the file using Python, using open, then this is the kind of thing that you get. This is not the kind of thing that you can actually read. Now, one solution, and that's a solution that's available to you if you're trying to pr process Excel files, is to say, in this case, it's export. Sometimes it would be save as. So here I want to say export. And I want to say, actually, sorry, I want to say save as. And what I want to say is that I want to save it as a.csv, for example. It doesn't have to be A, it could be B. Like you don't have to keep the name. So if you save it as B.csv, you say save. In this case, you'll get a dialog where it'll ask you whether you're sure that you want to save it as text. Here, generally, you want to say that the fill delimiter is like this. Uh, Unicode is fine. It's not ideal. Sometimes Latin is easier to deal with. So that's what I would recommend. So select Latin here. And now if you go and you see b.csv, you can open it with gedit, and it's going to be in the, in the familiar format, which you can also process with Python.